Hello, I'm Julia Watts from Creative Expressions and I'm here today to introduce you to the new opal polishes from the Cosmic Shimmer range. And there are six new colours, the six uh, colours in the range, and um, they're just a little bit different. They come in um, the gilding polish pot, so in the top you've got your uh, applicator tool, yours has obviously come nice and clean, and you've got the screw lid. I'm getting to mine. And you can see there we've got really lovely um, rich polish in there, but they, like I say, they're a little bit different. There's, I'm not going to tell you what this one's going to call called, I'm just going to show you it to begin with. I've got a couple of pieces of um, embossed card here. This is the Rainbow Swirls from, uh, it's a 3D embossing folder from Creative Expressions, and I've got, obviously got it on white and black card. Just like with the uh, gilding polish, you create yourself like a little ski slope. And if we run it over the top, you can see that the polish just picks up the top of the folder. And the 3D ones are just perfect for this. Obviously, you can just put it directly onto just a uh, card and create yourself a, a piece of coloured pearlescent card. And it dries very, very quickly uh, in the same way that gilding polish does too. So you can see here on the white card, it's um, beautiful and pearlescent and it's, it's virtually dry there, really lovely. Now, if we put it on the black card, this is where it's really cool, really cool. So look, this blue is now, how does it do it? Look, it's purple. It's a lavender and this, co this colour is actually called lavender blue and this gives you the indication which is why I didn't want to tell you what it was called. Um, so, the way that it does this is that the uh, opal polishes have an interference in it, an interference mica and it gives you that lovely difference in colour. This then opens up to huge possibilities with it. You obviously actually get in a twofer and they each react differently. So if I ju I've just got some I'll show you very quickly on the different colours. So we have here, this is the uh, Golden Flamingo. As you can see, it's a lovely uh, flamingo pink on the white card and it's this lovely golden colour on the black. Then we have the, uh, which one's this? This is the Pink Thistle. So it's, um, Yes, it's the lavender colour on the uh, white card and it's more of a pinky colour on the black. Then the uh, blush peach. This is not so much of an interference on this one. Obviously you've got that lovely peachy colour on the white and it's more of a pinky peach on the black. We've got the golden glow and as the name um, uh, kind of um, suggests it's a nice golden colour on the white and it's a uh, more of an antique gold on the black and then we've also got finally I've already shown you that one we've got the blue parakeet and this is green a lovely lime green on the white and it's blue on the black really cool so that, that that's, that's on the black and the white card and I've actually put a card together here um, which shows you, this is the uh, golden flamingo on the back here and I've actually coloured some card and die cut it uh, to do a bit of paper piecing in Sue Wilson's tulip flower square here but the back card here and on the sentiment there that is actually black card with the golden flamingo on it and you see really lovely shine to it. What else can you do with them? Well you can also stamp with them I've got a woodware stamp on here. This is the uh, Vintage Swallowtail by Francoise Reed. And to stamp, let's choose a different colour. We go for the blue, blue parakeet. Just, you can do this with, with gilding polishes too. You need to work quite quick, reasonably quickly. Lots of tapping over your stamp. And it's, the problem is that it's quick drying, but I can help you out with that. Remember, it's a water-based product. 
probably got a little bit thick in some areas, but that'd be. Remember, this is a this is these stamps from Francois Reed are brilliant because they are a vintage feel to them, so a little bit distressed. So if it doesn't stamp absolutely brilliantly, and here's my excuse already, um, it doesn't matter. Doesn't matter at all because it just nobody knows where this bit's missing. Right, so that's all over the stamp. Now, if you give it a quick mist, I'll get some card ready. Give it a quick mist with water. Remember, it's a water-based product. So if you mist it with water, I'm going to go three or four times. It does depend on your mister, how much water comes out. And we're using a stamping mat underneath. Give it a good old press. All the way around. This is a very high counter for me, so we'll see how it turns out. Peel it away. And then we'll do it on black, because remember it's going to be a different colour on black, isn't it? I think this is really cool. So apply more. You can actually just go for a second stamping if you want to without applying any more. But it's like your second generation stamping if you had an ink, it's going to be lighter. I want it to be a little bit darker if I can. You can play with the colours, you can put more than one colour on if you want to. Have a real mix. Okay, now remember we're going to mist it with water, give it four little squirts and we're going to go on black card. Once again, turn it over, give it a good press. You can see already the, because we're going on to black card and the stamp is actually see-through, that it's going to come out that beautiful blue colour instead of the green. Peel it away. Very grungy, but you've got that sheen coming out. Okay, so that's the stamping with them, and I've got a couple here that I did do earlier. And you can, this is the pink thistle, and you can see it's that lovely uh, pearlescent, uh, purpley colour on the white, and then you've got that pinky colour on the black. What else can you do? Well, you can also paint with them. So I've got here another couple of Francoise's stamps. This one's called Feathers. It's from the same vintage collection and we've got it on a black and on white card so we can show the difference. So we go for, let's try and pick a different colour. Uh, oof, decisions, decisions. Let's go for the pink thistle because I've got a sample in another colour. And to, do, to paint with them, what you want to do is, it's easier if you've got, you could just use your craft sheet, but I've got a little um, palette here. You just need a little bit of the colour into your palette. Right at the end of my, tooth, my uh, toothbrush, it's not a toothbrush, is it? My paintbrush, just in case I get, stab myself with it. Actually, let's mist a little bit of water in there and give it a mix. Remember, it's a water-based product. So the standard watercolour techniques all come into the fray, so give it a good old mix. You can add more gilding polish, uh, not gilding polish, opal polish if you want to. You can also um, do different colours, so you could add a little bit of another colour in there. You're going to get all sorts of different interference going on if you add different colours in there. Yeah, I think that's nice and mixed. And it, because it's water-based, it will um, set hard and then you can just regenerate with some more water. This is stamped and embossed, and what you'll find is if you actually go over the embossed line, because it's black, it's going to be pink on the embossed line, and it's going to remain as purple in the white space. So within this feather, we're going to get a bit of a twofer going on. Less water means you're obviously going to get a thicker colour, more water means you're going to get it nice and thin. That's the, we'll let that dry a second while I just put a little bit over the leaf of the black one. And again, this is going to work the opposite way. So where we're hitting the black card, it's going to be more pink. Where we're hitting the white embossed area, it's going to be more purple. Opposites.
fill that in. Drying time obviously depends on how much water you put in it. It's going to be, take a little bit longer than it would do if you were just using it straight from the pot. Okay. So hopefully that's nearly dry now. So if I just wiggle that, you can see there that on the embossed lines it's more pink and on, on the white areas it's more purple. And then on the black one you've got the opposite. More pink on the black areas and more purple on the white. So oak polishes will work perfectly on MDF as well. Um, I haven't got a sample of that with me, but if you want to just pop it onto MDF, pri if you prime it with white gesso, you're going to get whatever it does on white card, you're going to get it on, on that MDF. If you don't prime it so it's going directly onto the, the raw MDF, it's going to do more like it does on black card. There's probably lots and lots of other techniques you can do, but hopefully that's a good introduction for you. Hope you've enjoyed that. Bye.